This video will show you how to set up your Pocket Wizard radios for hypersync using a Control TL transmitter and the Power MC2 receiver for the Einstein E640 flash unit. What's hypersync? Find out more on wiki.pocketwizard.com. Before we begin, make sure you've updated your radios to the latest firmware version. You can update your radios by connecting each one to your computer, running the Pocket Wizard utility, and clicking check for updates. We do a lot of testing and are constantly adding features and improving performance, so the latest is the greatest. Let the update finish before you disconnect your radio. Be sure to repeat the update process for all of your other radios. Now that your radios are updated, set up your Control TL transmitter. You can use a Mini TT1 or Flex TT5. We're using a Mini TT1 in this example. Connect your transmitter to the utility. You'll need to make just a few settings adjustments before using HyperSync. Click on Settings and make sure Advanced Mode is checked in the bottom left corner. Checking this box exposes additional tabs for custom configuration, but we'll only need to change a few things for HyperSync. Now, navigate to the MISC tab. Use the drop-down menu to select the camera model that you're using. This setting will help HyperSync do its best to optimize results for your camera. Remember to click Apply Changes. Once the changes have been applied, it is safe to disconnect your transmitter. Now we'll set up the receiving power MC2 for HyperSync. Start by connecting it to the utility. Next, click on the HyperSync tab. One last step. Navigate to the option for Optimize HyperSync Automation 4. Choose if you want to use Reduce Clipping or Highest Energy. Reduce Clipping optimizes for reducing or eliminating hard black clipping at the bottom of the frame up to your camera's highest shutter speeds, but may cause more noticeable gradation in frame at all shutter speeds. Highest energy puts more flash energy in the frame at hypersync speeds closer to your camera's sync limit, but may cause bottom frame clipping at your camera's highest shutter speeds. By default, hypersync automation is optimized for reduced clipping. More detailed comparisons of the two hypersync methods can be found on wiki.pocketwizard.com. Be sure to click Apply Changes before disconnecting your radio. Now it's time to set up the gear to shoot. On the transmitter side, turn on your radio, and then your camera. We have an AC3 zone controller on our transmitter for controlling the power of our remote strobe. We're using full power, which will yield the best possible hypersync results. Next, power on the flashes and receivers. Wait a second or two for the flash and radio to communicate with each other. Now we're ready to fire the camera. The first shot after turning on your radio is a calibration shot. We recommend that you take the shot at 1 1 60th of a second. There will be no flash during the calibration shot. Now you can set your camera to whatever shutter speed you'd like and take a picture with flash. Hypersync automation will automatically pick the best timing offset possible for your setup and automation method. Different power levels, flash types, and cameras can all change the results you'll see. You can learn more about Hypersync and how it works by following the other links on this wiki page.